All right, next topic, neonatal shock. How do you feel about this, Jan? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not a fan, fan I'm either. I'm glad you're here, though, Emily, because... <laughs> nobody's a fan of this. This yeah. is a stressful situation. Um, and in general, I would say shock in the neonate is sepsis, 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 and then think about c something more rare, like congenital heart disease or even inborn errors in metabolism. Um, but often it's sepsis plus um, <laughs> congenital heart disease. So yeah. always think about sepsis and always treat for infection um, because little ones are, are at just significant risk for infection. Um, so other things could happen. Um, they could be dehydrated, obviously. Unfortunately, these kids could um, be victims of non-accidental trauma and anaphylaxis may occur even in a neonate. Uh, so how do we manage this? Um, I, I think really an important pitfall to know about young kids and children is their sympathetic tone is so naturally high that they hold on to their blood pressure. It's actually the, not even a criteria for diagnosing pediatric shock. Um, it, hypotension is not. Um, so they hold on to that blood pressure um, and they can be bleeding, they can be septic and still have a normal blood pressure. So that's a big pitfall. So what we look at if we can't so, look at blood pressure. Yeah. Um, so you look at the you look for other signs. So tachycardia happens first. Then there, you know, pulse pressure may narrow a little bit. Signs of perfusion, so mental status, which can be hard in a neonate, right? They're not exactly talking to you. Um, but signs of perfusion. A pitfall of that, I just um, was uh, went swimming with a friend who had a six-month-old, and it was kind of chilly out. And we took a video of the cap refill of that blue <laughs> extremity, yeah. this happy baby who was totally fine. But we were like, you know, cap refill. One second, two second, three. I mean, it was like six second yeah. cap refill. So temperature, body temperature, um, external uh, uh, temperature uh, can impact your cap refill. So there's some pitfalls there. So look at their pulses, look at their skin temperature, their cap refill, um, urinary output, all of these data points, but it can be a little bit tricky and subtle. Okay, so in frank hypotensive shock, again, you're really behind the ball when your vital signs are grossly abnormal. Um, these patients need resuscitation. Um, so at this point, they have a low blood pressure. Again, that is a late finding. Hypotension is a late finding. And they could be you know, slowly circling the drain with their normal vitals. And then once they're hypotensive, be very concerned because they're about to crash. The drugs that we use, um, we tend to, for the young, because of that high sympathetic tone, even in the setting of sepsis, we tend to use epinephrine much more and even dopamine. Kids are handle dopamine better than adults do. They don't have the arrhythmic side effects as much. Um, Warm shock doesn't tend to happen as commonly in kids. So we use norepi for, for sepsis in adults all the time, but it's usually a cold shock. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, and, and they don't really need that increased you know, sympathetic tone, that, that vasoconstriction, that's not gonna help them as much. So norepi isn't as helpful unless they have clinically warm shock, unless they're flushed and vasodilated. Um, we have SVT is very, very common in young infants. They'll come in just crying uh, is a classic presentation. They'll come in crying, crying, crying. Um, and you notice, oh, they're in SVT. We do use adenosine for that. And we already talked about using um, amio for ventricular arrhythmias or lidocaine. Uh, you have many electrolyte abnormalities. Patients may have like DeGeorge and have hypocalcemia that need calcium. Uh, hyper K is not as common in kids, but some kids do have renal dysfunction. Um, so you may want to use calcium for that, but it's just not as common compared to adults. And mag, mag is a great jug. That's what you want to treat if you have a patient in torsade. And remember glucose. So mm. even if this isn't their primary issue, if a baby is sick, they just don't have those glycogen reserves. They feed very, very frequently. Um, so check the glucose. And then as you're resuscitating the child, check it again because it can drop very quickly. Fluid bolus. Um, 20 cc's per kilo. Uh, so I think in the neonate, I, I usually err a little bit more conservative and do 10 cc's per kilo because cardiac kid is in the differential. Most cardiac kids can handle 10 cc's per kilo. Um, just pay attention as you're, as you're bolusing them. Um, so you don't want to overload them too quickly. Um, but if they are, you know, you don't think cardiac is the issue, if it's truly a, a septic child, um, we'll talk about the algorithm here. Uh, it's uh, some, one thing I want to highlight is 
it is really rapid, significant, higher volume of fluids that you want to give, you want to push 20 cc's per kilo, 20 cc's per kilo, up to 60 cc's per kilo in that first five minutes if they are poorly perfused and shocky. And that's going to be hard to do in these tiny vessels. So you're actually going to need a syringe. You're going to need to actively push this, get a stopcock and have somebody actively do this uh, for five minutes. That takes some intentionality. Um, and so you give them the fluids. Um, if they're in at 15 minutes, fluid refractory uh, shock, then you want to begin in inotrope and epi is going to be probably your first line uh, in most scenarios uh, and then after that if they're catecholamine resistant shock then you want to consider hydrocortisone so similar uh, to adults scary these are scary situations Good and stuff. again i have a lo low threshold to give my nicu colleagues a, yeah. um, a call or pick you depending on where yeah. you're at they're always happy to help and i'm calling you yeah <laughs> sounds good <laughs>